So when we buy fixed assets in our businesses, they start operating, helping us generate revenue. And then comes a time when we need to dispose them off. When we're disposing of these fixed assets, it is supposed to be accounted for as well. In today's session, I am going to show you how we dispose of a fixed asset. Now take note that when we are disposing of a fixed asset, it doesn't necessarily mean that the fixed asset you're going to dispose of has to be fully depreciated. Sometimes you can choose to dispose of a fixed asset when it still has a useful life ahead. So whichever the case may be, whether you dispose it of in the middle of its useful life or after it has been fully depreciated, these are the accounting entries that you're going to have to do. So it's going to take us basically four steps. First of all, we are going to create what we call an asset disposal account. It could be maybe we are, if we are disposing of a motor vehicle, so then it will become a motor vehicle disposal account. If we are disposing of uh, furniture, then we shall call it furniture disposal account. So the thing is, uh, let me use general terms here. So we are going to create an asset disposal account. And so step number one, we are going to transfer the asset cost um, you know, the, the, the cost of the asset transfer it to this disposal account. So how do we do that? We are going to go ahead. Remember, the asset account has a normal debit entry. So because it has a normal debit entry and we want to, 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 to transfer this cost away or remove this cost from the asset account, we are going to go ahead and credit the asset account with the amount of the, uh, the, the, the cost of the asset and then that is then we shall come and, and debit the asset disposal account that's the first step after doing that we go on to the next step the second step is that now we are going to get the accumulated depreciation of this asset and remove it from the accumulated depreciation account and bring it to the disposal account so here what we are doing is first of all uh, the accumulated depreciation account has its items on the credit side so uh, we are going to go ahead and debit the accumulated depreciation account of that asset with the amount and then go ahead and credit the disposal account, the asset disposal account with that figure. So in so doing, we have uh, transferred the accumulated depreciation from uh, to the disposal account. So after doing that, we shall go ahead to step number three. Step number three now is we are supposed to recognize the monies. Remember, we are disposing of an asset here. So sometimes you can dispose of an asset by selling it. And as a result, there are proceeds that come from the sale of that asset you're trying to dispose of. Sometimes it, you can just dispose it off by, you know, just giving it away. And of which, if you just give away that fixed asset, it means there, is no, there are no proceeds from disposal. So in the third step, we are going to go ahead and recognize the proceeds from the disposal. That is if you sold it. Now, these proceeds can be in form of cash, maybe, or it can be in form of bank, or sometimes the proceeds from this disposal could be an exchange. Maybe you're giving away this old dilapidated motor vehicle, and in exchange, you take, uh, in return, you're getting a different, a tangible asset. In other words, it's not cash that has been exchanged. It has been a tangible something that has been given to you in return. So whichever the case it is, at this third stage, you need to recognize uh, whatever proceeds they are. And so what we do, of course, if it is cash or bank, or you've received an asset, you're going to debit the cash account because the cash has improved, increased. That is if you've got a cash. Or if the money has been put in the bank, you've received a check, it means you're going to debit the bank account. Or if you have received another asset in exchange for the asset you're disposing of, then it means you're going to create an account and you debit that asset account. Remember, increases in assets are debited. So you debit the asset that, is, that has been received in exchange. And so what do you do with the, the credit? You go ahead and credit the disposal account with the proceeds from the disposal and the proceeds like i have already mentioned can either be cash or money in bank or it could be the very asset itself the fair value of that asset so you credit that with the disposal account so we have our disposal account right there 
So now we're going on to this stage number four. Stage number four from our disposal account, what you can see, we are having figures on the debit side. Uh, then we are also having figures on the credit side. So now what happens here is you're going to look at this disposal account and look at it as though it was a capital account. Yeah. So if you look at this disposal account, if the credit side of the disposal account is bigger than the debit side, what do you do? It means that uh, you have gained some, you, there is a gain on disposal. So what happens is that in the process of balancing of that account, the balancing figure will be our gain on disposal. And so you go ahead and put that gain on disposal on the credit side of the profit and loss account. That gain on disposal is under the category of other incomes in this in other comprehensive incomes now in case the debit side is bigger than the credit side it simply means that you have realized a loss on disposal and realizing a loss on disposal means that you're going to go ahead and expense that loss on disposal 